So let's sort of pick this one up where we left off in the previous uh, little video. And we were finding surface areas of cylinders, and we never did an actual example. So let's take a look at a cylinder, right? I'm going to try to draw a little cylinder out here. It's not the easiest thing to draw on, but we'll give it a shot. There we go. All right, so my cylinder, let's say, has a radius of 6 and a height of 10, right? What units, I don't know, how big a cylinder do you want? How about feet? This is going to be a really big cylinder. Okay, so I got a cylinder that's 10 feet tall, 6 feet in radius, and I want to find out surface area, and I want to find out lateral area. So the first thing is, what is the perimeter of the base? Sometimes it's nice to sort of organize your information on the outside. So the perimeter of the base is the circumference, is 2 times pi times the radius. So the perimeter of my base, the circumference, is 2 times pi times 6, 12 pi. That's the perimeter of my base. I know the height of my object is 10. So if I want the lateral area, the lateral area is the perimeter of the base times the height. So the perimeter of the base is 12 pi. The height is 10. That means my lateral area is 120 pi. What are my units? Square feet. So there's an exact value. If I wanted an approximation, I could grab a calculator and figure out what is the equivalent of 120 pi. And I can do that. Let's give it a try. 120 times pi gives me 376.99. Now, I would use the exact value when I go to calculate the total surface area because if my approximation is off, then I'm going to carry an error down to my next step too. All right, so if I want the total surface area, total surface area includes the lids on the top and the bottom. So now I've got to take my lateral area, all right, so my total surface area is my lateral area plus the area of both bases. How do I find the area of a base? Well, the area of a base is pi r squared, so this will be pi times 6 squared which is 36 pi. All right, so I'm taking my formula that I had for prisms. I'm adapting it to cylinders because they're the same types of objects. They have bases in parallel planes and the surface that goes around them. So my surface area, I'm going to take my answer from before, 120 pi for the lateral area. The area of the base over here we said was 36 pi. Now that 36 pi is one of the bases, I've got two bases, so I need them both. So my surface area is 120 pi plus... 36 times 2 is 72 pi. Add them together, and I get 192 pi square feet. All right. Again, if I want a decimal approximation, right, if I were actually going into a store and saying I need enough paint to cover, I'm not going to tell them I need to cover 192 pi square feet. I would say I need to cover roughly 603.186 square feet. Exactly that much paint not going to lose a drop anywhere that efficient. All right, so there's how you find lateral area, surface area of a cylinder. It's always good to take a, a walk through an actual example. All right, how about other types of objects? In this case, a pyramid. Now, you notice the difference between a pyramid and the prisms and cylinders we're working with is the pyramid only has one base. The rest of the sides meet up at an apex or a vertex up on the top. The other thing you'll notice is that for a pyramid, the faces are triangles. In the previous cases, the pr uh, prisms, the faces were rectangles. In the cylinder, it was just one surface that when you opened it up, it formed a rectangle. In this case, for a pyramid, faces are triangles. So when we go to calculate the areas and um, eventually the volumes here, we're going to need a couple of different measures. One of them is that if you look at the face of one of these um, pyramids, the face we said was a triangle. Well, pull that triangular face separate from the rest, and that triangle has an altitude, right? The triangular face, if I redraw it over here, has an altitude. Not the height of the whole pyramid, the altitude of the face. We have a name for that. We call it the slant height. And the slant height, we don't use H to abbreviate because H is the actual height of the uh, pyramid, the, the height of the pyramid that we call H is this thing that comes down the middle here. So instead of that, we use L for slant height. So this thing here is the slant height. That is the distance from the vertex 
to the middle of one of the sides, and it goes perpendicular down the face of that pyramid. Now, why is that important? Because if you pull that triangle apart, you realize that this triangle here, and that one, and that one, and that one, all four of those triangles are your um, faces. So if I want the lateral area, the lateral area is the sum of those four faces. Now, if you have a pyramid where the bases are all the same length, then you've got a much easier job because all you have to do is to find one of those faces, multiply it by the number of sides that you have. Now, what if those were not the same? Well, it turns out it's not too terrible. We're going to use the same idea that we had before, which is suppose that this is base one, and that's base two, and that's base three, and that's base four. If to find the area of each of those triangles, I did one half base one times the height and so forth, by the time I got done, I would have ended up with the slant height times one half times these four sides added together. Well, what are those four sides added together? If I add up base one plus base two plus base three plus base four, isn't that just the perimeter of the base? Let's boil this all down to a formula. The lateral area for this pyramid is going to be one half the slant height times the perimeter of the base. So L is the slant height. Slant height is the altitude of one of the faces. And that P is the perimeter of the base. So in this case, it was just a matter of adding four sides together to get the perimeter of the base. If you had a hexagonal pyramid, you would add the six sides. And you could show if you wanted to how to come up with those formulas, so that's probably beyond what we really need to worry about. All right, this thing has additional information. One half slant height times perimeter is a lateral area. The interesting thing about total surface area is that this time you're taking the lateral area and you're adding the area of one base. So one half slant height times perimeter is a lateral area. And then this base depends on the object, right? I'm going to say depends on the shape. In other words, if you had a rectangular base, you would add, you would multiply length times width to get the area of the base. If you had a regular hexagon as a base, then you would have to do your one half AP. So sometimes I do that work on the side and then bring it all back together at the end. All right, so here is a right square pyramid. So the square is the base, the triangles are the faces. I want to find the lateral area. I want to find the total surface area. So if I were to paint this object, right, if it were sitting on the ground, I wanted to paint the object and it were going to stay on the ground, I wouldn't pick it up and paint underneath it. I would only paint the lateral surface. So how do I find the lateral surface area? Well, let's look at some information here. First of all, that five that's over here, that thing over here is your slant height. Because that goes along one of the faces from the vertex to a point on the base. So I'm going to make a little note. My slant height is 5. All right, how about the perimeter of the base? Well, if it's a square, I don't know why they gave me two fours. One four would have been sufficient, but that's okay. We've got a 4 over here and a 4 over there. So the perimeter of the base, don't forget there's four sides. Four sides, each one has a length of 4. The perimeter of my base is 16. All right, while I'm sitting here, why don't I calculate the area of the base? Because I have a feeling I'm going to need it. Area of the base, right? Capital B. What is this? This is a square. The area of a square is side squared, or you can even think of it as length times width, right? It's the same thing, 16. Here's my caution. This perimeter and that area of the base have the same number value, but they mean different things. This thing over here is measured in centimeters. This thing over here is measured in square centimeters. So the number might be the same, but they measure different things and they use different units. That perimeter uses linear units. The area of the base uses square units. All right, so now it looks like I'm ready to throw some things into a formula. Lateral area. Lateral area for a pyramid, one half the slant height times the perimeter. So one half times five times 16, okay? Half of 16 is eight. Eight times five is 40. So my lateral area is going to be 40. And you notice that those are centimeters times centimeters, lateral area centimeters squared. All right, total surface area. So this time I want to know if I were to make one of these things, how much surface I would need in order to construct it. So it would be everything in the lateral area, right? That's 40 plus the area of the base. Now there's only one base, right? One base on the bottom, no base on the top. There's a vertex up there. So the 40 is in square centimeters. 
that 16 is in square centimeters. So when I add them together, my answer is going to be in square centimeters. How many? 56 square centimeters. All right, so now I've calculated the lateral area and I've calculated the total area. All right, this next example is just sort of an interesting comparison. I am going to have to do this on another sheet because obviously there's not space on this PowerPoint to do it here. But I've got a pyramid and I've got a Transamerica building in San Francisco. And I've got dimensions for each of them and actually I have more dimensions than I need. So the Great Pyramid has a height of 148, square base with a perimeter of 940, and it says the altitude of each triangular face is 189. That 189 is my slant height, right? That's the altitude of the triangular face. That's the slant height. I'm given the same information for the Transamerica building. And I got the height, I got the perimeter of the square base, and I've got the altitude of the triangular face. Now, the altitude of the triangular face, right? This is a triangular face. The altitude of the triangular face, that is the slant height, because I'm going to put all these triangular faces around the square base to come up with the building or the pyramid. So again, that's the slant height. So here, let's come back over to the other board and we'll work on doing the calculations for this. All right, let's start with the pyramid first, just because that was up there first. So the pyramid, if we look at the dimensions, the perimeter of the base is 940. And the slant height we said was 189. The lateral surface area is going to be one half the slant height times the perimeter. And these measurements were given in meters. All right, so when I take my calculator, because I'm not doing this in my head, 189 times a half times 940 gives me 88,830. 88,830 square meters, right? Because I'm multiplying meters times meters. All right, let's take a look at the Transamerica building. What type of information do I have for that? Well, it says that the perimeter of the base is 140. Ooh, that's a lot smaller. And the altitude of each triangular face is 261, so that's the slant height. So the lateral area is one half the slant height times the perimeter, because both of these are pyramids, right? Perimeter of the base. And so now I can multiply. 1 half times 261 times 140, and I get 18,270. And this is in meters also. All right, so I don't know if you've ever seen the Transamerica building in San Francisco. I, I've been there once. I don't remember it. But it's obviously an impressive building. Compare this tra uh, Transamerica building with pyramids that were built thousands and thousands of years ago. That pyramid is many times bigger than the Transamerica building. In fact, if I take the two numbers and divide them, 88, 830 divided by 18, 270, that's almost five times as big in terms of surface areas. All right, so that's how the two lateral surface areas compare. Now, we've done pyramids, we've done prisms, we've done cylinders. One thing we haven't done is we haven't taken a look at cones and we haven't taken a look at spheres. So for a cone, you're going to use the same idea as a pyramid. How are cones and pyramids related? Well, start with a pyramid and just keep adding more and more sides to that base. And eventually you begin to realize that it looks like a cone. Now, in a cone, a cone has a slant height. A little bit differently defined, but almost the same, right? Remember in the pyramids, we talked about the slant height as taking one of those triangular faces and looking at the altitude and calling that altitude the slant height. Well, there's no triangular faces on a cone, but really that slant height went from the vertex to the base and was perpendicular. Well, the same thing happens in a cone. The slant height of a cone goes from the vertex down to a point on the base, and it could be any point because the base is a circle, and that is your slant height. You notice that the slant height, the radius of the base, and the height of the cone all form a right triangle. And depending on the information you're given, you may have to use the Pythagorean theorem at some point to come up with that information. Now, the formula down the bottom is one from the book. 
can we relate that to something we already know? I think we can. So in a pyramid, the lateral area of a pyramid, we said, was one half slant height times the perimeter of the base. And the total surface area for a pyramid was one half slant height times perimeter, right? That's the lateral area of the base. Or that's the lateral area plus the area of the base. We can do exactly the same thing for a cone. I mean, look at the formula down here. Pi R L is the formula that's for the lateral area. So I could do some substitutions, right? I could take one half the slant height and the perimeter of the base is just two pi r. And so sure enough, the two and the one half cancel and I get the lateral area. If I rearrange these terms, I'll put the pi first, then the slant height, then the radius. My point is why memorize pi r l when you can just do one half slant height times perimeter for a cone also. I just want to introduce this to you because you're going to see it in the book and you might see it someday when you're teaching from a textbook that uses this. All right, same idea for the surface area, right? One half slant height times perimeter. Yeah, all right. If I do some substitutions, I can call it pi r l. The area of the base, because it's a circle, is pi r squared. So is this surface area formula wrong down the bottom? No, not at all. It's a perfectly valid formula. It's just that if I memorize a different formula for every problem, then I'm going to have to memorize a lot of formulas, and I don't have that much brain space left. So if I memorize half slant height times perimeter for lateral layer of a pyramid, it works just as well for lateral area of a, of a cone. All right, let's try one. Here I've got a right circular cone, better than a wrong circular cone. I want to find lateral area. Oops, look, I got a typo in the PowerPoint. There should be an A at the end of this. Lateral area and surface area of the cone. How do I find lateral area? Well, for lateral area, I'm going to use the same idea as we did for a pyramid. So for lateral area, I'm going to use one half slant height times the perimeter of the base. Maybe I want to come over to the side here and identify some things. First of all, the slant height is five. And technically, they didn't have to give me that in the picture. They could have just given me the three and the four, and I could have used the Pythagorean theorem to come up with that five. But the slant height is, in fact, five. All right, what else do I know? I know the radius of the base. Radius is 3. So what is the perimeter of the base? The perimeter of the base, because it's a circle, is 2 times pi times the radius. So the perimeter of the base is 6 pi. What is the area of the base? Well, the area of the base, areas of the base is a circle. So I'm going to end up with pi times 3 squared. 9 pi. All right, let's throw some numbers in here. Lateral area equals 1 half the slant height times the perimeter of the base. And by coming up with those values in advance, now all I have to do is throw them in. Half of 6 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. So my lateral area, 15 pi. I'm multiplying centimeters times centimeters, so that gives me centimeters squared. All right, you're more than welcome to do the problem as you go along. In other words, write out 1 half slant height times perimeter and identify the slant height, calculate the perimeter on the fly, you can do that too, okay? Sometimes if listing these things out in advance only helps because if you go to eventually to add volume to this, you're going to use some of these same attributes all over again. Then you don't have to calculate them twice. All right, total surface area is going to be the lateral area plus the area of one base, right? There's only one base. Cone doesn't have two bases. So if I add these together, I end up with 24 pi and I'm adding square centimeters to square centimeters, there's my answer. If you should happen to want a decimal approximation, 24 times pi gives me 75.4. Well, 75.40. Okay. So this first thing up here is an exact value. This over here is an approximation. I'll keep the exact value as long as I can because if I'm adding values to values and I do approximations along the way, I'm going to lose some of that accuracy. All right, one more type, and then we'll do a summary table, and we'll be done with this. I know this is running kind of long. Um, surface area for a sphere. Sphere is unique because it doesn't have a base, right? All these other objects, if you sit them on a table, you sit them in such a way that they won't roll off the table. Even if you have a cylinder, if you put it sideways, yes, it will roll off the table. But if you put it with the circle as the base, it's going to stay there. A sphere does not have a base. But if you were to slice a sphere in the middle, right, not towards the top, but like if you had an orange and you sliced it exactly in the middle, it doesn't matter which way you hold it as long as it goes through the center of that sphere. We call that thing the great circle. Better than a pretty good circle, 
This one's a great circle. So how do you find the surface area for a sphere? It turns out that it's simply 4 pi r squared, right? And without going into the whole details as to how this happens. So suppose you have a sphere with a radius of 6, right? And you want to find the surface area. First of all, there is no lateral area for a sphere because it doesn't have a base. So there's no such thing as finding the lateral area for a sphere, right? Because it doesn't have a base. So the only thing there is for a sphere is the total surface area. Total surface area then is 4 times pi times the radius squared. So 6 squared is 36. 36 times 4 is 144. So my surface area is 144 pi. And I don't know, big sphere, 144 pi square meters. Okay, Because I'm multiplying meters times meters because the radius is in meters. Radius squared is in meters squared. All right, I came up with a little summary table for this. And we will add more to this as we get into the next unit. But suppose I wanted to find lateral area and surface area. And eventually, I'm going to want to add volume to this table as well. So you might want to leave yourself a spot for volume. Rather than listing every type of object that we came up with and separating pentagonal prisms from hexagonal prisms, from triangular pyramids, from rectangular pyramids from cylinders from cones why don't i just think about it this way objects that have two bases objects that have one base objects that have no base and so two bases we're talking about prisms and we're talking about cylinders one base we're talking about pyramids and cones and no base we're talking about spheres and the same formula works for all of them. You just have to adapt to your specific object. All right, so things that have two bases, prisms and cylinders. If you want to find the lateral area, take the perimeter of the base, multiply it by the height. That's your lateral area. If you want the total surface area, then take your lateral area and add the area of the two bases. We'll leave the volume blank because we haven't done volume yet, but if you're making a chart, you might want to make it like this so that you have a spot to add it at the end. All right, and then based on that, you can take anything and convert it. All right, pyramids and cones, they only have one base. Those things have slant heights, right? different from the other ones. So one half slant height times perimeter will give me the lateral area. This thing only has one base, so I have to take the lateral area, add in the area of a base. Okay, and so that'll work for pyramids, that'll work for cones, that'll work for pyramids with any size base, too. All right, there's no such thing for a lateral area of a sphere, so we'll leave that out. Surface area, 4 pi r squared. And with these five formulas that are up here, I can find lateral area and surface area for any of those objects that I just covered in this video. All right, in the next section, then we'll start taking a look at volumes, and then we'll be able to fill in those pieces on the bottom.